Hey guys. Hey guys, I wanted to go over the wonderful world of canning and how as a prepper and as a van lifer, it's excellent. So I'm at home now, but I do this when I'm traveling, but I have, so it look, we call it ugly meat when you can, because it doesn't look pretty, but it's really good. So I have duck wings and I have chuck beef and I have pork shoulder. So canning is amazing for preppers and van lifers because I can take one of these beef chucks and as you see here, um i can so this is beef fajitas this is barbacoa so you put fajita seasoning and then barbecue sauce um and then i did the same with the pork shoulder barbecue sauce and the fajita seasoning and you make the most excellent get some excellent guacamole i just covered it so it wouldn't uh, brown and some beans so what's great about canning is like if um it's worth the one day worth of work to just take some beef off put it in and put some either asian spice korean spices like bagolgi or kalbi his mexican spices where it's like fajita or taco seasoning um basically or even mongolian beef if you want to go chinese or asian and um and do like beef and broccoli so i love it because you can do this in the van too just pop the lid open with your um fingers and there you go. So as a prepper, you know, not only if I ever have to bug out, I can just take some canned food and go. But this this is so much. This is like a pound and a half. And, it, and it's already cooked. So all you have to do is warm it up. And then you can make a nice little burrito. Now I'm all low carb. So, you know, I use this. Or I use um of my shirataki noodles. So this is like a cognac or shirataki. Um, it's rice too. Uh, so I you can take these two which are shelf stable which is great for a van because I don't have a fridge nor do I plan on getting one So shelf stable dehydrated food that preppers already have is just excellent And um, not just that just for here and on the road like love my canned food So if you have not learned the art of being a prepper I highly re uh, canning as a prepper just having shelf stable food that doesn't need any power And as a camper I just take one of these and I go camping so that one day worth of work and, you know, maybe three hours to can this for the rest of the year is worth it. I also like duck because I like a lot of Thai dishes. So I can take this duck out and I can put it in. Um, my favorite is roast, crispy roast. Uh, it's called crispy duck basil. Uh, but you can also do um, duck and green curry. And so the only foods that I pressure can are foods that are tough. And so the pressure canning softens them up. I didn't like when I did chicken because the chicken was so soft, it just had, I just didn't like the consistency at all. So I only used the tough pieces of beef, but the thing is beef chuck and pork shoulder are the cheapest cuts. So it really, really works out and has all that fat, which keeps all the flavor. And duck is another one that is a tough um, food. So by the time it's pressured, it comes out, it is tender and moist. And you just put in the Thai spices because mostly my duck is all Thai food, which I love Thai food and you're ready to go. So um, I'm about to buy about from the farmer's market, about three ducks. And then I have this huge meat cleaver. I've tried to do it without a meat cleaver. You want the meat cleaver. You want the meat cleaver. <laughs> I did it with the butcher's knife. It was not enough. So I bought this little meat cleaver. So um, I have a trip, but next week I'm going to go to the farmer's market and get about three ducks, chop them all up, can them. And that's a good year's worth of food or anywhere else where I can just take duck out and I can roast the duck. I can put five spice duck. I can do um, roast duck, which is one of my favorite Chinese dishes. Oh, I really like Asian foods. If you haven't, I like all foods, honestly, whatever. Like Asian is a love, um, then specifically Thai food. And then I would say Korean. And then I would say Chinese. Um, and then I would say Vietnamese. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, are there any other Asian influenced food that I like? Uh, then I'd put Filipino there too. Uh, but with the duck, I mostly just stick with the Thai food. And it's delicious. If you, if you know, you know. And I learned how to cook my favorite Thai restaurant meals um, and, you know, green curries and whatnot. So, yes, so just tuning in as a prepper, this along with, like, maybe I, I bring some tortillas from home, but I have dehydrated food already in my van that just stays in there because um, it can stay a bit cool where I live um, year-round. And I also have, like, a cooling blanket that I keep over the food that keeps it cool as well. Don't know how it works, but I can link below to the cooling blanket. And when I'm not in my van, that goes over the counter top. So even when it gets hot, it'll stay cool under that blanket. I recommend you having a couple of those if you're van lifing just for that. So yeah, just another tip of van life prepper, how prepping and van life meet, mate, get married and 
saves you in case shit hits the fan. <laughs> so thank you guys. Just wanted to show you guys. Oh gosh. Oh, this is some fire guacamole. And I want to show you guys a trip I just found out. And I had to Google it, but I'm just going to tell you. So in order, so I, I made this yesterday and I just made it with two avocados, some lime juice and some salt, cilantro salt. So when I preserve my herbs, if I have excess herbs from the garden, I make a salt out of it, which lasts all year. You put like a one to four ratio, um, you know, one quarter cup herb to like three quarter cup salt. But I use half and half because I'm bold like that and it still lasts the whole year. Um, the salt keeps it um, preserved. And so you can use fresh cilantro, but I usually use my herb salts with Mex like if I use Mexican food, I use cilantro salt. Or if I use Asian food, like um, like the Thai uh, crispy duck basil. I'll use my basil salt, right? And then I have thyme salt, rosemary salt, and I use that when I'm using roast ducks or whatever. So I made this fire guacamole and I found this little trick. So in order for it not to oxidize, so yesterday when I made it, you put plastic wrap over it and then, okay, so I'm not going to show you me filling this thing with water because honestly, my, I have not cleaned and you guys just aren't going to see me do that. So what you do is over the plastic, you put water in it. Look at that. And then I put extra saran wrap on top, but it wasn't necessary, I don't think, but I did anyways. On top, and then I took it out today, and it doesn't oxidize or turn brown. It's still fresh. Because apparently you don't need this wrap. You can just put it directly on top, um, and the water and the fat doesn't mix. It just stays on top. But I don't like that because it does get absorbed a little bit. So I just put this, like, little saran wrap. And you can keep your guacamole fresh, so imagine in your van life. A little water and some saran wrap and you're good to go keeping your guacamole fresh for the next day dude i was so excited about this this is like a this is like my find of 2022 i was gonna say find of the century honestly but it depends on how much you like guacamole i love me some fresh guacamole right so this was so great so it'll be cool on my van trips i could just get some fresh fruit some fresh this and i already have my meat i already have like either chickpeas and beans and da 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 da, -da that i'm cooking in my rice cooker for low wattage, but it can cook my beans and my rice and my and my grains. I'm low carb, but I don't know. That's okay. When I camp, I'm not just because it's so much easier. So yeah, just wanted to go. Um, and then got these cool little taco trees because I love tacos. Um, low and this is all low carb, right? And so, um, yeah, just wanted. I hope this helps. Uh, so thank you guys, everyone, for the channel. I am a prepper and a van lifer who does it on the weekends, but I love how it's an integration. And with everything crazy going on in the world, it is the perfect place to be if you're into preparedness and if you're into camping um, outside in the wilderness and if you're into van life. And there are so many positive benefits of being a prepper as well as how it's going to contribute to your van life if you choose to combine those two just to stay prepared and always self-sufficient. All right. Um, I'm also going to be working on a little something. I did my um, camper van build out and I hired it out. And uh, a lot of people think you have to do the build yourself. You don't. I'm busy. I run my own businesses and I take care of my daughter. <laughs> like I do not have time, but I hired it out and I'm going to make a little list or something that shows like if you hire it out, how to give them the work to do, um, explain the work. So you can just sort of hand it to them and they can get it done. So stay tuned for that. And, um, and a journal I want to share with you guys. So thank you so much. Van Life Prepper out.